by coming to the knowledge of Yahweh and his Torah. See, he's raising up a nation who the, the children, or one of the children, the, the, the first one had the action, if you will, of being that progenitor of the seed. But he gives it up. The bone of the beans. Now, your seed and your seed have taken that hill. We have a job to do. Bless his name. To be raised in this faith is a huge honor because somebody else could have it. Somebody else before us could have it, as we want to say. <clears throat> okay, and one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older serve the younger. We see that consistently throughout the scriptures. You know, we see that uh, from Genesis all the way to the, to the book of Revelation. We, we can see these concepts. And when the days were filled for her to give birth and see twins were in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, so they called his name Esau. And afterward his brother came out with his hand holding onto Esau's heel, so his name was called Yathaka, which means heel ground. And they tried to swallow him down. <laughs> uh, he's trying to get to something that I need. <laughs> All right. And Yitzhak was 60 years old when she bore them. And the boys grew up and he saw the king, a man knowing how to hunt, a man of the field, while Yadiko was a complete man holding the tents. Now remember. <clears throat> Shem, Ham, and Jacob. The account goes down with them seeing, or uh, one of them actually seeing the nakedness of their father. And it's not capitalized, and it should be in our scriptures, where it says that he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. It's talking about Yahweh will dwell in the tents that know his name. Shem, his name. Alright, so watch this. And Yadiko could be stood, wait, excuse me. Uh, and Yaakov was a complete man dwelling in tents. See, so these people would be the progenitor of those who in the last days would begin to call on his name. Through who? The Mashiach. What is your twin? What is your tent have marked on it? Our immersion, our calling on his name. See, we begin to be marked. And our tent is a place where his name dwells. Hallelujah. And Yitzhak loved Esau because he ate of his wild game. But Ritka loved Yadiko. And Yadiko couldn't stew. And Esau came in from the field. And he was with him. When you're out there chasing things around in the field, you get hungry. But you need to be very, very conscious of what our flesh is desiring. Should we feed it? Or should there be times of fasting? Should there be times that we might not need to give our flesh what it is wanting? Because it can cost you your birthright. How was Eve deceived in the garden? With something she consumed. How are we divided? By eating the clean and unclean. And this can also be applied in the spiritual manner as well. What are we feeding our, our soul? He was weary. And Esau said to Yadiko, please feed me with that same red stew. For I am weary. That is why his name is called Eden. But Yadiko said, sell me your birthright today. And Esau said, look, I am going to die. So why should I have a birthright? He's already showing us that he does not respect what he has coming from his father. And as we study these Hebrew words, we're going to understand with clarity what he was giving up when this account happened. Every year we hear people uh, teach on these Torah portions, but I submit to you, once you look at the ancient Hebrew here, 
you see things in a totally different light. And once you have the knowledge of not what said, it, it even makes more sense. <clears throat> and he swore, Yaakov said, swear to me today, and he swore to him, and sold his birthright to Yaakov, and Yaakov then saw he's gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, and he ate and drank and rose up and left. Thus Esau despised his birthright. What I want to do out of these portions is take a look at these two words, despised and birthright, in the ancient Hebrew. There is a huge message in these two words. And I submit to you that they tell the whole story that it took 75 or 100 words in English to even convey. All right? So here we are. If you have your charts, you can follow along here. Despise is Strong's Hebrew number 959, and it's the Hebrew word basa, basa. And it means to disesteem. So it means to not show the esteem or glorify, in this case, the inheritance. We are supposed to glorify that inheritance by what? Reaping, sowing, planting, harvesting. And now the ancient Hebrew lexicon, we see here that that word to despise is the bet the uh, Zion and the hay. So here we see, let me get my chart off so we can follow along over here. So we have the bet, the Zion, and the hay. Now, looking at the bet, it says on your, on your chart that it can mean a house or a tent, but it can also mean the tent floor plan. The plan that came from the original tent, the one that was showed to Moshe on the mount, the same one that he was trying to convey to us here. Now, we see the Zion there, which is a little like a plow or a razor or a knife. And it can mean to cut, but it can, it's also used to harvest. So it has a, a positive and a, and a negative charge every Hebrew letter. It's got a positive and a negative to it. So, in this sense, we know that it, it being used in uh, this English word despise, it's going to be used in the negative here. All right? So, this little man here with his arms being raised, it's like he's praising. But if you look on your charts there, it can mean to look upon, to reveal, to receive revelation, or to breathe. Now, look at this. He despised the tent floor plan and cut himself off from the breath of life. Every one of those words in a negative sense, that's what we see in three Hebrew letters. He, de he despised the tent floor plan, which is the first one. See, the inheritance is supposed to go to the first one. And he was the first one. So what did he do? He despised the tent floor plan and cut himself off from the breath of life. That gives a lot more meaning to that English word despise. What has happened now to Edom in all the prophecies that his inheritance will be taken from him at the return of Yahshua HaMashiach? Right. The bad part about that is Esau is Edom, and Edom, a large part of Edom, became Rome. And what came from Rome? The church. And this is why we must pray that not only he will reveal himself, not only the deep things to us, but to the people that we love. It doesn't mean that they're going to get hit up, but we're trying to get deep into the first resurrection that only happens in the order of Melchizedek. If you are not in the order of the priesthood of Melchizedek, 
you just can't be the first resurrection material. There's just no way. As we're going to see, this ties directly into what he pursued. Okay, so out of the ancient Hebrew lexicon, that definition is to treat something as spoiled, no longer of value. He taught, or excuse me, he treated this birthright like it was nothing, like it was something spoiled in the water. He had, he had no, uh, he didn't esteem it as we see the definitions. Okay, and the two-letter root of that word despise is the bet and the Zion. And look at these. This, this is the cut and page right out of the, the ancient human lexicon. The action root is to spoil. Concrete word is spoils. And the abstract word is despise. The pictograph bed represents a house. And the Zion represents an agricultural implement or a, implement or a weapon. Combined, these pictographs have the meaning of a house cut or attacked. You see? So he cut himself off from the tent floor plan, and that hay represents breath. What does that mean? That his descendants will not have the breath of life. But he was the firstborn, and he should have been the progenitor of all the people who would finally produce Mary. And who did it instead? Who found the instructions of the Father worthy and clung to them? So this can mean to be cut off from the house as well. And an enemy would plunder a household for goods to supply themselves. And see, that's what he did. He already had built and taken for his, himself wives from Canaan. He took himself wives from the other tribes. He had already built his own nation. So his belt had already been made full. All right? So an enemy would plunder a household for goods to supply themselves as a bird of prey attacks its prey. The tent floor plan originally given to the first one. We need to understand that here. Originally, the, the tent floor plan is given to the firstborn of the family. But if the firstborn of the family is not going to cherish and esteem that inheritance, then it's going to be given to somebody who will. Because Yahweh's plan will come to fruition. That's what we're going to see. So here's the word birthright. Birthright in Hebrew is Strong's Hebrew number uh, 1062, Bekorah. Bekorah. The firstling of man or beast, the primogenitor. I had to look that one up. But here's the definition of that ancestor of a people, a progenitor. So that's what he despised. He was supposed to be the progenitor that would carry on the seed. And in that scene, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. But because he did not esteem the Father's commandments, it was given to, and he became the one who would produce the seed, that would produce the seed, that would produce the seed in which the high priest would come. Surprise with the preservation of the priesthood. Through that man. And so, how much more emphasis does that put on us? I mean, we're supposed to produce that seed and plant that seed. That's what that little thing can mean too. Plowing, planting, harvest. It's got everything to do with reaping and sowing. All right? So he was supposed to be the ancestor of the people who would finally give birth to Miriam and then God would manifest himself into Miriam and there, there came the Mashiach who became our high priest, who became our savior and should have loved for us. So here is that. There's a lot of levels here. In the ancient Hebrew lexicon, this is the definition that we see there. And here's the word. It's bet, cap, wall, resh, hay. 
Notice there's that breath again at the end of this word. Carried on by the first one. So the tin floor plan, the hand, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the tin peg, and the wretch, those, those are significant. The house, the hand that would be nailed to the stake, the head of the body, and the breath of life. That's what the firstborn was intended to do when we look at the language. The first one was to carry on the tenth floor plan and produce the one's hand that would be nailed to the stake. That's a nail or a tin peg, and it would be the head of the body who would bring life and breath back to us. That's what he gave up. He gave up being the progenitor of the one from his loins who would produce the egg that would hold the seed of life in all mankind. He gave up that. And we were walking in that. We were walking in that until we accepted Yeshua. And this gets a little bit deeper as we look into the, to the rest of the portions here. Now look at the, uh, the definitions here from the ancient Hebrew lexicon. Firstborn of the flock or herd, birthright, the rights of the firstborn son. Deuteronomy 21, 17. First fruit. Let's look at that verse real quick. Deuteronomy 21, 17. But he is to acknowledge the son of the unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has, for he is the beginning of his strength. What, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is made from the beginning, everyone? What does the plant start out as? A seed. It's all got to do with reaping, sowing, these agricultural things. you always trying to get us to understand. That's what he gave up. He gave up the right to be the one who would sow the seed. And the head of the body would come from that seed. The progenitor of everything known to man. Plus the seed is the word, right? And the seed is the word. That's what we're going to end up here with this one. Right? For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. That would be, in the ancient Hebrew text, that is what you would be seeing right there in the first one. The house producing the hand that would be nailed to the stake, and it would be the head of the body giving breath to us. Let's face it, we were dead. We were dead in our sins. We were dead in our sins. But, there was a struggle in the womb, and it was a struggle for the birthright. Doesn't that sound like the adversary? To struggle for the birthright so that we could have life? So that we couldn't have the breath that is promised by the first one inheritance? This is starting to make a lot of sense. So what Esau gave up was much more than a piece of land. He gave up the right of his seed being the producer of the Messiah, who was the Melchizedek, and detach himself from the first resurrection. That is, that is giving up a lot more. Now remember, when I say detaching yourself from the first resurrection, that's because if we were not of the seed, okay, uh, the order of Melchizedek is the, is the one, the priesthood that preserves the seed. We're underneath that covering. And anything that isn't underneath that covering Okay, which, as we're going to see, is connected to the commandments and everything else. That's how we're preserved. See, the Word preserves us. Just like that salt preserved uh, Lot's wife. She wasn't destroyed, she was preserved with that salt. She was stopped dead in her tracks. And now that we are coming to the fruitation and the knowledge of the Torah, and who our high priest is, 
Now we see what he actually gave up in his birthright. He detached himself and his descendants from the first resurrection. So in the next set of scripture, in the very next chapter, Genesis 26, 1 through 5, we see what causes us to be part of this. Okay, part of this. What, what brings us into, uh, uh, into the ability to grab a hold of this and keep it? Genesis 26, 1 through 5. And there was a scarcity of food in the land besides the first scarcity of food, which was in the days of Abraham. And Yitzhak went to Abimelech, sought of the Philistines in Gerar. And Yahweh appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Mitzrayim, Egypt. Live in the land which I command you. Sojourn in this land, and I shall be with you, and bless you, for I give all these lands to you and your seed. See, there it is. There's the switching over of the seed. The birthright is now given to Yah from his loins. The promise has come to pass. Not Esau. Sojourn in this land, and I shall be with you and bless you, for I give all these lands to you and your seed, and I shall establish the oath. There's the covenant. There's the covenant. The oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Same oath, same covenant, generation after generation being handed down all the way until Yahshua came and secured. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I shall increase your seed. There it is again. He's telling you, by your seed, we're going to make this happen. Not by Esau. Like the stars of the heavens, and I shall give you these lands, give all of these lands to you, to your seed, and in your seed, all of the nations of the earth shall be blessed. It's the same exact thing he spoke to Abraham. Abraham's our father. So the same exact thing is being spoken to us. Being handed down to those in the house. And here's the reason why. Because Abraham obeyed my voice, guarded my charge, my commands, my laws, and my Torah. He received that promise because he was obedient to the Father's commandments in his Torah. And the laws of it. And once again, I'd like to point out, um, for those of you that are in opposition to following the Torah, you think it's the law. Um, excuse me, no, it's not. There's the Torah, and the, there's laws in the Torah. But the Torah is not the law. There's laws and commandments, precepts and judgments in the Torah, but the Torah is not the law. There's laws in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here we see the highlight words, see and commands. All right. We're going to be taking a look at those two words in the ancient Hebrew. So first we'll be looking at see in the Hebrew. It's Strong's Hebrew number 2233, Zara. And it means in the strong seed, fruit, plant, sowing time. It's got something to do with sowing your seed. Not just being the seed, but sowing the seed, which brings us to the Word. The Word in the oath, in the covenant, that has been handed down to us generation after generation. <clears throat> and it also means posterity. Now, there's not a whole lot of information when you look up this word in the ancient Hebrew lexicon, but we see once again, there's the Zion and the Resh. And this time, we see the I am. Yahweh is watching over to watch those who are clung to the head and sowing this seed. The ones who are, who are plowing the field, planting the seed. And it's all got to do with what? The commandments we just read. It's all got to do with the Torah and the commandments in it. That's what we're supposed to be sowing if we are the seed. We're going to be working in the field. 
And there's going to be some that come in a little bit later, right? And they're, they're doing the same job that we're doing, but they're going to get paid the same price. Mm -hmm. You see all these connections to the, to the brick right here, to the brick out of shop. Okay, now going to the root word of this word, it's the same letters with a different root, it's used in a different context. We see Zion, Resh, Ion again. So he's watching over those who are planting and, and working the field. And what has this head got to do? That's what we're planting in the field. The head of the body. We're ministering the good news to them. Yahshua is the head of the body. So when we share Yahshua with people, we're planting the seed. And the word will wash and water that seed that we planted. And sooner or later, our work and our labor is going to produce fruit that brings glory and esteem to the covenant and the birthright. That which Esau despised. <laughs> so now we've received the inheritance, and as we're going to see, we are the ones that receive the birthright. Because we are descendants of Yahweh. Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yahweh. So here we see the definition uh, right out of the ancient Hebrew lexicon. The action root, action word is to sow, concretely see, see, that's all of this planting. The head of the body, when we plant the head, remember, uh, once, once the uh, seed is planted and it begins to grow, it starts to bear, uh, bear fruit. And what do they call the, the ears on, on barley and, and grain? The head, there it is. <laughs> it's the head of the body of what? The stalk of what? The harvest. We are in covenant. We receive the birthright. We are to plant the head of the body into people's hearts. We are to till the ground and Yahweh is watching on us when we do it. That's what keeps us in covenant with Him and that one is what gives us access to the birthright which does have something to do with the plot of land. But it's something much more significant. It has to do with our seed, everyone. Brother Harley and his wife have a lot of seed. These brothers and sisters have lots of seed. And what's going to happen when you plant the Messiah and his word in them, you are sending them out when they grow up and they are going to plant that same seed as well. Hallelujah. The sowing of seeds by scattering them across the field. And we've been scattered into every nation. And in that, in that disobedience, his plan still is going to come to pass, as we're going to see this evening. And it comes from, there it is once again, the Zion and the Resh, the harvesting of the heads. as a spreading of seeds. When we spread the seed, it comes up and the heads begin to, uh, to be harvested when it's harvest season. Now, to back all this up, let's go into the Brit, Hebrews chapter 11. Verses 17 and 18. Now remember, this is the faith chapter. And if you'll notice, if the doctrines of the church which say that we are gaining the inheritance by some other avenue, if that concept can even be true, then please explain to me why from 11 verse 1, Hebrews 11 verse 1, as an example, it says, take unto you all of these people who were living life according to the Torah. As an example, every one of these people in here, we are taught about in the Torah. Verse 17 and 18. What is that for Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are supposed to use them as an example. And the church has us believing that we're supposed to just look at them as an example and, and not do uh, what they call wickedness. No, we are supposed to be an example, use them as an example, and walk as they walked. We're supposed to be an example. 
That's the whole thing about the planting the seed. We, we don't even actually have to say anything to people to plant a seed. They can look at us and where are, where are we? On Shabbat, right here. That's planting the seed. All of this seed gathered together in this house, this tent, where the ten forward plan is being exercised this twice a week. Okay, this is his house. And the seed, his seed is here in it. Our homes are his house. Our bodies are his house. And that seed should be here. That's what we're seeing in these ancient Hebrew movies. There's the good news. Right there. How do I reach people? Walk as he walked. That's it. That's all you've got to do. If you follow him and he was the word, you're going to be following the word because they couldn't get it right when they would read it. They were hearers of the word but not doers of the word. So he said, here, let me make this even easier for you. I'm going to manifest myself in the flesh, the word, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Just like a father with his son or his daughter or his children when they're learning to walk. Come on, I'm going to show you how to do this. Right? So he manifested himself in the flesh and showed us how to walk. And you know what? The large portion of believers in this world still deny that that's how we're supposed to walk. Verse 17, Hebrews 11. By belief, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Yitzhak. And he who had received the promises offered up his only brought forth son. Wait a minute. He wasn't his firstborn. And he wasn't his only son. But in the eyes of Yahweh, what did we just see when we looked at the words for despised? He had been cut off from the breath of life. He no longer even exists in the sight of Yahweh. Those who exist now are those who are walking in the breath, the word that was breathed, and in the order of Melchizedek, those, that's the priesthood that will rise in the first resurrection in which the bride will come from. Then there's going to be another resurrection. Right? But we won't even be on the first resurrection. I don't want to be like he said, I'll be in the second resurrection, just try to slide in, come into the cracks and crevices, or in another way. I want to minister, I want the word to minister to me to show me how to be part of the bride, how to be part of the priesthood, how to be part of the first resurrection, because that's where each and every one of us belong. He wants us in that resurrection. And only by denial and by disesteem can we be rejected from it. Now, for a little comfort zone, the people who don't make the first resurrection and have despised the inheritance and the covenant, if you go back and read Ezekiel chapter 37 and 38, it tells you that those people rise again. Okay, there's a second resurrection. So that doesn't mean that everybody's going to H-E don't do things in a handbasket. It just means that they're not first resurrection material. Yahweh is not this being that is ready to just condemn us and not give us an opportunity to actually repent and know and practice the truth. When Yahshua is standing in front of the gates and he says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. He's not sending them into Gehenna. He's just telling them, I never knew you. But you haven't followed my Father's word. You haven't been to the Sabbath. You haven't done anything that we do. I never met you. You haven't been to any of our social functions. <laughs> I never ran into you. you so you're not ready to just come in here. That's what he's saying. He's not, he's not sending people to, as a church to stay hell right <laughs> All right. So the next verse. Of whom it was said in Yitzhak, your seed shall be called. So even in the Brit, we see everything, everything that we've seen in these ancient Hebrew letters, even spoken about right here in the New Testament. 
So we're looking at, at the root of this Hebrew word for seed. So concrete seed, abstract, the sowing of seeds by scattering them across the field. Once again, we see the little harvest tool in the heads. And it's all linked to the commandments, everyone. For Abraham obeyed my voice, my charge, my Torah, my laws, my precepts. That means that you're going to be fruitful and ready for the harvest. All right? Going on to the next word, this is a beautiful word. This is a beautiful word. Commandments is, is uh, what is used in most English versions. And commandments in the Hebrew is strong Hebrew number 4687 mitzvah. Plural mitzvah. It comes from number 6680 in command, whether by man or divine, the law. And so its root word is 6680. We'll take a look at it. It's, it's a Sava, Sava. That's why we see mitzvah there. Its root word is Sava. To constant, to constitute or enjoy. That's significant. That's what joined Abraham to the Father. Was the mitzvah that he completed. His good deeds. It's what this is showing us in the Hebrew is that the law and the commandments is Yahweh's constitution. The United States has a constitution. So does Yahweh. It's called the Torah. So if you want to be part of this nation, part of the inheritance, then you must do what the nation says you have to do in order to live in it. Because if you are an alien, an outsider, and you get a green card and you come to the United States, if you break certain laws, they send you back. And, and believe me, a lot of those men don't want to go back to their own land. Because when they go back there, their people are going to kill them. Do you understand the concept here? If we go back to that land that we left, when we weren't in the inheritance, and when we weren't covered in the order of our said not priesthood, we go back to death. There's no breath there. The little man crazy. There's no breath in that inheritance. There's no life in it. So in the ancient Hebrew lexicon, once again, when you look up uh, mitzvah, it doesn't give you a whole lot of information until you go to the root, and there's not even a lot there, but we see a lot in the letters. Okay? It's the uh, men, the zahi, the wa, and the hay again. The men, if you look on your chart, is uh, it's a picture of water and it can mean blood, which is cleansing. Okay? Then we see the Zahi there, and it's a little man resting. But it means a trail. If we're, if we're walking in the way, we are resting in the Messiah. Then we have the, uh, the law there, which is a tin peg or a nail, but it also can mean to join to in the Hebrew, or to uh, to be secure. If the peg holds down the tent, to be secure. And in this context, that this word is being used in, it's security. And then we see the breath once again. Because Abraham guarded my mitzvah. Right? And that's where the breath is. That's where the life is. He said, if you do these things, you shall live. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we see that there's cleansing in that word mitzvah. It means cleansing the water and blood. Then it's a trail bringing rest. All right? And it's a security. And it brings back the breath that had been taken from us through disobedience. Now we receive the commands. We're once, once again drawing in that breath, the word. What was breathed into Adam is now being breathed into us once again. And then its two-letter root is the, uh, the Zahi. 
and the wall. That means we can't get this messed up. Look, there's not in English. Our word command can, can relate to a lot of different things. But in the ancient Hebrew, everybody needs to pay attention to this. Command, command, command. There is no getting around this. That the inheritance and the life and the oath and the covenant is directly linked to commands. Cleanse, rest, a trail, security, and the breath. And that breath comes through the revelation of these things because it can also mean revelation to, to reveal something to someone. He's revealing something from the heavens and that's, of course, the commandments. <clears throat> so the mitzvot are what keeps us cleansed as we journey. See that trail? That's the way that we read about in the, in the New Testament or the bread. Followers of the way. There's the trail. It's a path. If you look on your charts, it's a trail or a path. Okay, and it brings security. So there we go. The commands are the trail to security. The commands are the trail or the path to the security. Looking at the ancient Hebrew here. The mitzvot are what keeps us cleansed as we journey on this trail that leads us to the security in Yahshua. Now, we've seen a bunch of information on the Hebrew. We see one guy giving up his inheritance and the younger brother receiving it. And we are receiving that calling right now, today. As those who follow the mitzvot in our walk with Messiah, we will join in the firstborn and receive the blessing of the birthright. This is all confirmed in prophecy in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 11, 14 through 20. Then the word, there's the seed. I like that little picture there. It's got the word open, it's got the plant, it's got the seed, it's got the leaves. It's the whole picture of what we've seen in the ancient Hebrew. Beginning in verse 14, it says, The word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, your brothers, your relatives, your kinsmen, and all the house of Israel, all of it, are those about whom the inhabitants of Yerushalayim said, Keep far from Yahweh. This land has been given to us as a possession. Therefore say thus, therefore say, thus says the Master Yahweh, Although I have sent them from afar among the Gentiles, where are we at? We're out here in the nations, but we're receiving the same calling, and we are of that seed, and that's why we're receiving the calling that we're receiving right now. Because we were descendants of Abraham, Nitzhak, and Yavikov, and he says he's going to gather us out of the nations. Although I have sent them far off among the Gentiles, and though I have scattered them among the lands, remember the definition we just looked at, to scatter the seed. I have scattered them among the lands, yet I was for them a set apart place. See, he saw a resting place. In the Messiah, he said, I will be a resting place for them. How many times in the bridge do we read those concepts that we rest in the Messiah? So it's directly connected to the order of Melchizedek. He's the high priest who covers us. Yet I was a, uh, I was for them a set apart place for a, a little while in the lands to which they came. Therefore say, thus say the Master Yahweh, and I shall gather you from the people. 
and I shall assemble you from the land where you have been scattered, and I shall give you the land of Israel. And they shall go there, and shall take away all the disgusting matters and all of its abominations from there. What is that saying? That right now in the land of Israel, that is not Israel. We are Israel. We have not been gathered yet. We're only resting in the Messiah. And we, at His coming, are going to go cleanse that land. It is our birthright. It belongs to us. Esau forsook it, and he's in control of it right now. Edom and Ishmael are in control of that place right now, and it belongs to us. And that's what we forsook. He said, even though I gave it to you, because of the disobedience of your older brother, now you turn around and you won't do what I say to do in the land. He said, I'm going to have mercy on you and I'm going to teach you while you're out in these nations how you're supposed to run that inheritance. It's our birthright. So how did he have to fix it? How did he have to fix it? We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. And they shall go there, and shall take away the disgusting matters and all its abominations from there. And I shall give them one heart, and put a new spirit in you. And I shall take away the stony heart out of their flesh, and give them a heart of flesh, so that they walk in my laws, guard my right ways, and shall do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their own. So what did he have to do? He had to restore the firstborn priesthood by joining us to a seed that was actually the firstborn because Esau was to be inheritance. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Colossians chapter 1. Begin in verse 12 and read through uh, 18. This shows us how he brought us back to qualify, if you will, as the first one for the inheritance. <coughs> Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has made us fit to share in the inheritance. <laughs> who was promised the inheritance? The firstborn. Of the set apart ones in the light, who has delivered us from the authority of darkness and transferred us into the reign of the Son of His love. That's who the inheritance was given to, and to the obedient Son. And guess what? Yahshua was the first one. In whom, in verse 14, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin who is the likeness of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of all creation. Because in Him were created all that are in the heavens and all that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulerships or principalities or authorities, all have been created through Him and for Him. And He is before all, and in, in Him all hold together. And he is the head of the body. Wait a minute. We just looked at those ancient hieroglyphics and it was talking about the head of the body being our security. Right? He is the head of the body, the assembly, who is the, be who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead. That he might become the one who is first in all. So now in the Messiah, we become one body. And we gain the inheritance of the birthright through Him. And that which was forsaken by Esau has been given to us. Because we obey the commandments, the mitzvot, 
just like Abraham, just like Yitzhak, just like Yaakov. And we are out here in the nations according to the prophecy, receiving that calling right now, and we are practicing sowing these seeds, preparing ourselves for the millennial reign in the land of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you so much for your word once again, and we thank you for this beautiful language of yours and how it enlightens us and, and adds so much more uh, definition to what we're seeing here, Father. We just praise you and we thank you so much for the presence of your spirit here today. And as we uh, break up to the Cayman Fellowship, Father, we ask that you would bless the meal. Also ask that you would bless the hands to prepare it, Father. And we pray this in the precious name of your Son, Yeshua, our Messiah. Hallelujah. Did you hear my voice raising up from me? Did you see my hands raising gracefully? Side. And it took me just a little while